Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Laughix. Got another video for you guys today. I wonder what it could possibly be today. Who knows? Well, looks like it is another Logic Boy repair. We got a MacBook in here. This is the A2337. This is the M1 MacBook Air. And it's very nice, obviously. And it's 2020, so we're seeing a lot of the M1s actually come in. Recently, they have a lot of problems, right, with them. And for some reason, it's not charging. So we want to actually see what the issue is for it. So let's plug this in, see what our readings are. Okay, so we're putting out one, and what we're probably looking for is about like right 20 volts and then some ampage there. That would be nice. But we're getting about f uh, four, well, almost five volts and about 0.45 amps. And let's plug it in the other one and see if we get the same thing, because that can mean something if it's not. So plug it in here, and so we get a lesser reading there. So the current is a little bit different, right? So we get um, about the same voltage looks to be about the same. That that could fluctuate. And but the current is a lot less, so it's about 0.13. So let's try it one more time just to make sure. See if it doesn't change or okay, it's about 0.45. So that one is about the same there. And let's plug it in one more time over here. What's going on? Okay, so we do see that there are different, um, uh, there's a different current going throughout each port there, which can usually indicate that there may be like a CD32 issue, right? And that's the um, that's the, the chip that's going to be converting the 5 volts to 20 volts, right? Or the communication chip when you plug in your USB-C connector because what it's going to be doing is it's going to be saying, hey, wait, I'm a laptop. I'm not a phone. So I don't want 5 volts. I want to have 20 volts or at least go out, right? And that's what it's going to be doing. So Anytime you have USB-C's that have power and data, which pretty much a lot of them are, especially for charging, you can have a very similar type of issue. And we talked a lot about this on the channel, about it being from before. Even MagSafe still is giving the same type of thing. And even MagSafe 3 is pretty much USB-C connection. Actually, check out that video. It's actually pretty funny because we actually have like a board view and we show that same type of thing anyway. So you have the same type of problem regardless of it. So looks like we may have that type of problem. So what we need to do is we need to open up because we most likely have a board issue. And uh, let's take a look and see what's going on. So before we go too into it, let's just see uh, by removing the battery, see if the voltage changes or any behavior changes, right? And we'll probably want to do the same in case... Uh, there's something else going on. So our current's still pretty low. We want three. And let's see. But the same. Okay. So well, almost no difference there. Wait. Maybe there's a little bit of a difference there. Five volts, point two zero. So the current did change a bit. Um, but still, it's cycling between two different ports there a little bit differently. So we're going to remove the board completely, obviously. And let's take a look. What we want to do now, let's do a nice little inspection, make sure uh, there's no liquid damage or anything else. Um, it would be nice to see if there was something under here, it would be pretty obvious, um, or something there. But who knows? Sometimes it could be a little speck or a little spot somewhere else. And then um, I guess we can check maybe the thermal cam if we don't see anything else there. But nothing super obvious. Looks like a pretty clean M1 board, though. So let's go under the microscope. And usually these ones, we don't really see obvious damage on them. They come in a lot with... Um, shorts myself so nothing crazy and there's not a whole lot you need to look at there taking a quick look at it maybe i have to remove the heat sink because there's more actually under there um we don't see anything crazy we did a quick visual inspection so let's go under the thermal cam and we're gonna see if we see anything obvious there to at least give us some type of hope right So looks like uh, we have two areas over CD32 getting warm, but this is a pretty good indicator here. We see on the bottom one. So what if we switch, right? Because these are your CD32s. You need both of them to work for this thing to work to turn on anyway. Um, so it's going to just die. There you go. So let's plug it in the, the other one and let's see if it changes any behavior. So it looks like that there is something maybe going on with that one. Um, let's go ahead and remove it. I mean, <laughs> let's go under the microscope and see if there's anything obvious there. So if I bring it here and I take it out and let's see. So is there anything crazy there? Any liquid? Maybe there's a little bit of spot of liquid there. Anything? No. Okay. No. Nothing obvious. There could be a problem underneath there or the 
the chip itself could be bad. So we see clearly that these have an issue. Um, and what we most likely want to do first is we want to try to see if um, we could do a reflow before doing any type of replacement because you really don't want to be replaced unless you have to. Sometimes if we program a certain way and stuff, we don't really want to be doing that. So, um, but if that's where it comes to, then we have to do that. Sometimes you have to replace both of them too. Uh, if one shorts, you could have a communication problem or anything else. So let's actually get into that. Um, we'll work on that and see if we can get to work. All right, so we're going to be removing uh, the chip and replacing them. Now these are BGA chips, so they are quite different than other ones as they have as you can see on the bottom here, even when you remove it, you, the part of the chip is actually there, which is part of the solder of the chip. And they're very particular on um, because they have the balls underneath. That's why they're called BGAs. So um, what we're going to be doing is we have to remove it. You have to totally clean it to make sure that there's going to be no other issues with contact or anything else there. And when you get a brand new chip in there, it already does have, um, it's already uh, re-balled there. Well, not really re-balled because it's already there, but it's balled there. So we'll call it that. So it's underneath and uh, we're able to do a replacement for that. We're going to be doing that. But we did notice even after we plugged this in um, that we we're still getting a problem. And we saw that there was a problem actually on the other uh, USB-C IC. And you see there's a little chip in the corner there. And even if we go over to the side, we see that there actually is a little bit of a piece that's there. Um, we're not sure if it's some type of metal debris or something like that. It's not just a typical solder. But it looks like there's something that actually got underneath, stuck underneath there. Um, hopefully there wasn't any work done to that, but there could just be a little bit of debris or especially someone opened it maybe before there was some problem with that. So we need to remove this one as well because that's what we were talking about earlier is we have to have both chips working in order for this to be totally working uh, itself. And we can see even look at the little piece of debris that's there it looks like it's a little chunk of metal or something else there that was underneath and that can be causing the short and also making it bad and now let's finish it up and just test it let's plug it in oh. let's pop it up see if we're getting our voltage we got a 20 looks good power buttons in there we got the apple logo so boots so anyways guys i hope you guys enjoyed watch this video on doing a repair for the a2337 2020 m1 macbook air if you did please leave a like it really does help us a lot subscribe more content we got lots of cd32 issues that we actually go over we should talk a lot about the USB C ports um, and the circuit that actually does give a problem on these models um, thankfully there's no other t2 problems or anything else that can also happen especially if there's any type of short to it you have to reload those firmwares go to maybe like a dfu mode or something like that we're pretty lucky that that doesn't happen because that does risk the data for it so um, that's just how they go for them but that's a repair. We're able to do it, able to do a fix, and everything looks good. So, see you guys next video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.